Hey everyone, I hope you're all doing really well. Today I wanna to share with you some makeup product categories that I am not going to be purchasing in the immediate future. This reigns true all the way through to May. If you're not aware, currently I am on a no buy and I will be ending this current no buy in May. I will leave my low buy intentions video that I posted on the first of this year if you're at all interested in hearing a little bit more about my low buy structure, my designated no buy periods that I'm doing this year and all of my intentions with my makeup collection and purchasing habits. But in this first, you know, month and a half that I've been on my no buy, I've been really thinking about how my collection looks, how I consume my makeup. I've been getting much more familiar with, you know, what I own and how I use it. And so I have been reflecting on what kind of items I would actually want to purchase when I am in my or out of my no buy rather. So once I'm out of this no buy period, what do I really wanna bring into my collection and what don't I want to bring into my collection? So I wanted to share with you those categories that I am not gonna be purchasing in the month of May, even though I have you know, all the freedoms in the world of bringing new products into my collection. I do wanna restrict these categories and I do think it's important to be really aware of what I own and realistically what makes sense to come into my life. So I'm gonna share with you five categories that I'm not gonna be purchasing in the month of May and possibly ongoing. And I really was inspired to do this video by Kelly Gooch. She did this in both 2020 and here in 2021 as well. And then I also saw Tara Brooke do this video recently too. So I was really inspired by both of these ladies to look at my own collection and to analyze it a little bit more critically. Now, I do wanna also preface this video by saying that I do accept PR and that's something that I talked about in my low buy introduction. And I don't foresee myself bringing a lot of PR into my life. I am very, very selective about it. I really do try to be very critical to ensure that they're products that make sense for me and for my collection and just the way that I do consume makeup. However, there is the possibility that some of these categories may be added to through PR and not through my own purchasing. And I'm not going to hold myself like accountable in terms of like, feeling guilty about bringing something in because it was received in PR versus purchasing it. I just want to be more analytical and more aware of what I own, but if the opportunity does arise to try something out in one of these categories and it's something I'm genuinely curious about and interested in, I will definitely you know, take that advantage of that and share that experience with you as well. So with all that being said, let's just hop on into all of the categories that I will not be purchasing. So the first category is powder blushes. And I don't feel like I have an excessive number of powder blushes by any means, but I do not need any more because I do have a wide range of different undertones, different you know, different types of colors and finishes that work really well for me and work for different instances and different makeup styles. However, I just don't feel like I need any more. And there was a period there where I felt like I may as well buy more because that's one of my smaller categories in my collection. And now it's grown to this point where it does feel maybe a little bit impossible to tackle. <laughs> I don't feel like I will ever be able to get through all of the blushes that I have in my collection. And I don't anticipate I will ever be able to get through my entire collection but I do feel a little bit overwhelmed by the selection of blushes that I do have, powder blushes specifically. Cream blushes, I do feel a little bit restricted by as well, but, or not restricted, a little bit um, overwhelmed by as well. But I do feel like there are a couple cream blush formulas that I'm really keen to try, including Salt New York. I really, really want to try some of those products and I do think I may make a purchase in May from them. It may not include cream blush, but it might. But with blushes, I just, like powder blushes specifically, I don't feel like any other powder blush could come into my life and fill a hole or fill a gap in my collection because I feel like my collection is very cohesive and it does cover all those possible, you know, looks and styles that I could want. I will not be bringing any new powder blushes into my life, not at all, possibly for the rest of 2021 actually. I'm a little bit sad to say this 
and I'm a little hesitant to say it because I don't want to purchase any more foundations or tinted moisturizers. And I have said in the previous two inventory, makeup inventories that I did, that I really wanted to increase my tinted moisturizer collection and minimize my foundation collection. And yet somehow recently I've seen a spike in the amount of foundations that I have and I'm using up my tinted moisturizers instead of using up foundations. I'm down to only two tinted moisturizers in my collection and I foresee that number being one very, very soon. And yet I have like six or seven foundations and it just, the numbers aren't working out. It's just, it doesn't make any sense. So if I was to bring more tinted moisturizer into my collection, I would use that and I probably wouldn't use up the foundation. And so I'm just going to restrict myself and say I can't purchase either. So no base products. I can purchase concealer, of course. I don't think I need to, but I might allow myself to purchase a concealer or two but I really cannot purchase a tinted moisturizer or a foundation, no liquid base products, like full complexion products, because realistically the foundations that I have, I really do enjoy. And some of them are like so underutilized. I haven't used them very much whatsoever. I'm not really familiar with the formula yet. And I've had them for a couple years already, which is like just wrong. And so I foresee that when I do run out of some tinted moisturizers and I'm down to just the one, I'll use that on its own. But then I can also just mix my foundations with primers or moisturizers and make them into tinted moisturizers and get them used up by using them in the way that like is my preference for skin complexion products at the moment. So Yes, I may want to increase my tinted moisturizer collection, but in order to allow myself to do that in the future, I really want to work through some of my foundations and get those used up, get those out of my life, and then have maybe like one or two standalone foundations and then like two or three tinted moisturizers. That category is just totally out of hand and it's completely on the opposite end of the spectrum of where I'd like it to be. The balance is so off that I have to restrict myself entirely. And I don't see that being an issue because I do have so much variety. And like I said, I can cocktail products. I can totally customize the products that I have and make them work for whatever situation I want. And I'm just going to tell myself that is how it's going to be. That is how it's going to be as much as I would really like to repurchase my Bare Minerals, Bare Minerals Complexion Rescue because I absolutely adore that product. I will only use that product and that takes forever to use up. So I'm not going to go there. I'm not even gonna like allow myself whatsoever. And we'll see, we'll see where my collection stands come November when I do have my purchasing period again in November. We'll see if I need to introduce more base products into my collection then, but Again, this is one of those categories I foresee I don't even need to really increase at all in 2021, possibly. This next category is powder highlighters. And just like powder blushes, I just literally do not need any more variety whatsoever. I have a highlighter that could work in every single possible instance. And the funny thing is that I oftentimes even use eyeshadow as highlighter. So the amount of highlighter possibilities that I have in my collection is truly, truly endless. I foresee that I don't need to purchase any sort of liquid highlighters either, but I do have my eye on the Auric Glow Lust and I probably will purchase that. And I think that that would be categorized as a liquid blush or nope, not blush, liquid highlighter. So I don't wanna say that I'm not purchasing liquid highlighters because that is a product that more likely than not is going to make its way into my collection. It just looks absolutely beautiful. And I'm working my way through some of my liquid blushes. No, why do I keep saying blush? Liquid highlighters at the moment. So I definitely can justify a little bit more purchasing that product. Um, but when it comes to powder highlighters, it, there's just no way I can justify it. It doesn't make any sense for me in my personal preferences at the moment with the current state of my collection. I just have so many, like when I did my inventory in November, I think I said I had 26 highlighters at that time, 26 pans of highlighter. Who freaking needs that? No one, no face needs that. And I have so many highlighters in my collection that do have a little bit of pan, but then there's so many that don't have pan. And I just feel like I could really 
really love on my highlighter collection so, so much more than I have in the past. There's no justification for purchasing more highlighters and I, I'm gonna hold myself to that. There's no reason whatsoever to bring in any more powder highlighters. Nope, not at all. I'm not even wearing a highlighter today. I'm wearing the e.l.f. Illuminating Palette, just kind of like blended all over the blush that I'm wearing. And that's it. And that's truly the vibe that I've been enjoying lately. So why would I bring in more, more products when I have things that I absolutely love and use in different instances, different ways. And yeah, I just, I don't, I don't need it. <laughs> I don't need it. <laughs> and then the next category is one that, again, this kind of pains me but I'm not gonna purchase another eyeshadow palette in May. I will not do it. I have over 20 eyeshadow palettes. I think I'm at like 21 at the moment because I decluttered my Kat Von D shade light eye, but then I got gifted one. So I'm pretty sure I'm sitting at about 21, maybe 22 palettes in my collection. I also have single shadows. I also have like liquid shadows and I have single pots of like the ColourPop Super Shock shadows. So I have, endless eyeshadow selection in my collection. And I don't need another curated eyeshadow palette because I do have so many colors and so many finishes and I just have so many products that are underloved and underutilized. And I am going to be reintroducing my Pan Those Eyeshadows project soon. And I really want to keep my number relatively consistent so that I can see some actual concrete progress in my collection. And realistically, I don't need any eyeshadows whatsoever, but I do want to allow myself to have the opportunity to purchase some single shadows from some indie brands. So I just don't see the need to purchase like a, you know, 10 or 14 pan eyeshadow palette and then also go and purchase maybe 10 or 14 singles from another brand. That just brings my number up so, so high. I also like literally do not have space in my makeup collection storage to put any more eyeshadow palettes into my collection. It just doesn't make sense for me. It pains me so much because honestly, whenever I do get a new eyeshadow palette, I feel super inspired and really reinvigorated and so excited. And I just, I love photographing a brand new palette. I love playing and swatching the entirety of a brand new palette. I love the experience of trying out a new formula and just, you know, being inspired by different color stories. It really does give me so much excitement and so much inspiration, but I just, I have to feel that within my own current collection. I need to instill that in myself in a way that I haven't allowed myself in the past because I'll just be like kind of bored a little bit over what I already have. I'm like, I'm excited for something new. Let's try something out. And then I just, delve into a brand new palette and everything else kind of goes to the wayside. And I just, I don't want to keep doing that. I don't want to keep encouraging that kind of mentality for myself. I really just want to enjoy what I have. That's really the whole point of doing this no buy right now is enjoying what I have and figuring out a way to be less wasteful in terms of my money and the actual physical products themselves. So no eyeshadow palettes are gonna come into my life in the first half of this year. It pains me, it really does pain me, but it's for the best. <laughs> and the final category that I will not be purchasing is lipsticks. I feel like that's gonna be a sentiment for a lot of people this year. What's the point in purchasing lipsticks when you are wearing masks out in the world? Who knows how much longer this is gonna be the case, but I foresee it being for quite some time. I also am just generally not going out in the world anyways. And when I look into my own collection, I really do have a lipstick that works for any possible situation. I have bright orange reds. I have beautiful brown nudes. I have like a deep green. I have literally every color under the sun, except, except I don't have a black lipstick, which I've been kind of like wanting lately, but when I did have a black lipstick, I didn't wear it that often. So I need to think about it realistically and what makes the most sense for me and my current lifestyle. And my current lifestyle is I sit here all day long. I'm either in class, I'm either editing <laughs> or I'm working and I work from here. And so the few times that I'm on you know, camera here for YouTube or for my work meetings, no one's going to be like, you wore that same lipstick the last 
few times we saw you. So nobody really cares. And I have so many lipsticks to explore within my own collection. It would be really nice to see my lipstick collection look a little bit more loved and to get some more use out of the things that have been sitting around in my collection for quite some time. That's why Shop My Stash is just so amazing for me. And every time I go into do a Shop My Stash, I don't want to pull a ton of lipstick products anyways, because if I'm currently panning lipsticks, which I am working on two in my 30 by 30 project pan, I already feel like I have more than enough selection with the goal of trying to really make progress on my collection. So I'm not gonna be bringing any more bullet lipsticks or liquid lipsticks into my collection. However, I do foresee myself getting more lip glosses because they are just so easy to just toss on. I love, love me a gloss lately. There's no reason to bring any more like full coverage lipstick kind of products into my life whatsoever. And it honestly, it pains me. All of these categories kind of make me feel a little bit upset and not upset, but you know, a little hesitant for sure to admit that I don't need any more and that what I own is sufficient. I don't want to say that out loud because I love purchasing new makeup. I will not deny that. I love trying out new products and new formulas and it's just so much fun for me, but at what cost? That's really what I'm trying to instill in myself at the moment. And so I really need to be critical, very analytical. And I do feel like even just setting these intentions up for myself for when I am going to be no longer on my no buy period, it is really beneficial and really important. And I do feel like I will have a lot of success knowing that a month and a half into this no buy, that I know that those are things I don't need to bring into my collection. It feels really good. But again, I don't wanna really put this out into the universe because, oh, I love highlighter. I love blush. I love, I love makeup. I love every single category type of product. Like I just, I just do. And so it is difficult, but I know it's for the best. And yeah, I really hope that you enjoyed hearing some of my sentiments. I really hope that you enjoyed reflecting with me. Thank you so, so much for watching and thank you so much for hanging out with me and I will see you in the next one. Bye everyone. Mm -hmm.